All right, gentlemen, how does it feel to be a part of this panel after a very, very power-packed female panel that we had right before this? <laughs> <laughs> they said no 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 beautifully i think it's it's great that we're here to hear perspectives from the other side of the table as well that's very very interesting and when we're talking diversity today we're talking diversity equity inclusion belongingness all of that put together while gender diversity is very very important even even belongingness has become a very important part of that so uh, thank you so much for joining us firstly gentlemen i'd like to start with a very imperative question for you know there is a lot of talk happening around DEI now, but, and a lot of strategies are being put forward by organizations. According to you, with some important learnings maybe that you can share from your own experiences, how was it for you 2022? How was the year 2022 for you? And what are some of the strategies or best practices that we can take forward and maybe some that we can leave behind? So, uh, Shazli, I'll come to you first with that. Thanks, uh, thanks, Jasmine, and uh, no, I'm very happy to be here with this uh, with this esteemed panel, and uh, you know, uh, also happy to hear the, the thoughts from our colleagues earlier with you know the very powerful uh, ladies panel. So we will try to do justice by uh, you know trying to be as engaging as they were after this. But I think uh, you know there were some key lessons uh, you know we took from uh, from 2022, is, and you know some of the the previous panelists already said is. Uh, you know, nothing really can be said is unprecedented uh, anymore in terms of uh, what we have gone through. And I think when we look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, practices or what we have learned from it is that, you know, the, the, I think the pandemic gave us a very powerful advantage in terms of really looking at relying on the use of technology for, for our outreach. And, you know, this manifests in very different ways for us. I think the big uh, plus was uh, you know, for example, our approach to uh, campus engagements with universities, etc. You know, in, in the past, if you think about how we would do it, you would go to a booth, you would, uh, you know, you, you, you'd get banners, you'd plan, uh, you know, weeks in advance, uh, you know, you would get involvement of everybody, you'd have to travel there, set up something, and that's a lot of manual work. And, you know, when we had to think about how we do it during the pandemic is, we, we do it virtually. And so from an a engagement pool of maybe you know, 150, 200, uh, you know, if you get a, a, a good uh, pool of universities, now if you engage online, you get 2,000, 3,000, right? So that scale has you know, e immediately changed the game of, uh, you know, you know, how we want to look at, uh, at, uh, at attraction. And uh, you know, what we realized then is how we can further leverage technology to make sure that, you know, we, we also have a, a, a DEI lens uh, into it. But before I think you can talk about the solution, you need to understand what are some of the things that are hindering, I would say, the progress of, of DEI. You know, what are some of the small, subtle things that maybe, uh, uh, you know, pull or attract, you know, a, a particular segment or, or, or area of the population? Um, and so one of the things we, you know, we, we, we talked about in my previous company is that even things like your role profiles, the words that you use tend to attract different, uh, you know, di different parts of the population. For example, if your, your role profile or job description has more uh, aggressive sounding words, stronger sounding words, like, you know, you need to be assertive, you need to take charge of, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You, you know, the research shows that you're going to have a larger pool of applicants who are men uh, rather than ladies. And so, you know, there is now tools that we have looked at that actually filter the job descriptions that you use and point out, look, what words are, you know, can be suggested to be more neutral sounding. And, uh, and then, you know, you appeal to a wider segment of the population. So I think these are just things that, you know, uh, uh, have... have uh, made us think about our approach to, uh, you know, to, to uh, attraction, to DEI, uh, and, uh, you know, some of the technological advancements that have come out of the, uh, of, of the pandemic. So the pool has certainly become larger for you, I understand, because of hybrid working. And uh, as you said, stereotyping has to be let go of, if I understand you correct, right? Thanks, thanks, Asli. Uh, Dr. Sarvana, what are your thoughts on this? What's some learnings about DEI and what can be taken forward or left behind? Uh, Thank you so much for having me here. I must say that I'm still sitting in the midst of the vibration of Nalini, Sharina, and Divya's talk. 
still having that radiant energy. Uh, just to go with the flow of your question, uh, Yasmin, I strongly believe uh, COVID has advanced DEI, right, in many ways. So when we talk about DEI, we speak about gender, uh, race, religion, age, you know, disability, or sorry, differently abled and things like that. Yeah, exactly. So technology has only advanced, or, or rather technology has helped advance DEI in the last two, three years. So that's a very, very positive side as to how I see. And within our organization, our numbers have moved a lot, right? So I can say at HP, we embed DEI in everything we do. And we created history in Americas, corporate Americas, that we are the first company and we are the number one company today in having a diverse board among the technology company. Okay. And others are still following it. And we haven't stopped there, right? I mean, that's the first step. We want to have 50 percentage of you know, women in leadership by 2030 across all the 160 countries that, that we operate. And, uh, you know, many such numbers, and I will just share it as we go the flow. Uh, but, you know, to the second part of your question, what I feel that we should drop behind, I would say the unconscious bias yeah. that everybody has. Uh, just not to have that repetitive of Shashli said, Shashli said the right thing. But, you know, this uh, unconscious bias is there. And I must admit, I had it before 10 years. Right, so the stereotyping that you're talking about, unconscious bias is what I wanted to, you know, all leaders in this room and the organization to leave behind because women are creator of the world, creator of life in the world. They are the best multitasker on planet Earth, right? And uh, when we start believing that women is the source of life and source of energy and being an ally to support them would help so one, DEI got boosted with pandemic. That's my learning from 2022. Two, what I wanted to leave behind as a whole, unconscious bias. Lovely thought, lovely thought. Thank you so much for sharing that, Dr. Sarvan. I also totally agree that uh, the way the world has transformed in the past two, three years and the whole focus on DEI became so much stronger because of people had to be connected with distributed workforces. They couldn't have taken any other route but this, but that's interesting. And as you said, biases, we all have them in some form or the other. So just letting go of them would be a great change. Uh, Sazali, what are your thoughts on this? What are your learnings from 2022 for DEI? Thank you for the question. Uh, I will address this topic from the perspective of cyber security Malaysia. Yeah. And how, uh, but we, before I can share my perspective, let us try to understand our environment. Uh, we are in the era of digital, and from there we look at the challenges that we are facing. Then we can talk about, we can talk about how uh, we use uh, HR approach in order to address those challenges. And uh, in most cases, what changes our world is technology. And uh, we have seen how digital transformation has changed uh, not only the way we live and do business, but technology also has changed the way threat is evolving. Yeah. And uh, in the past last 10 years, maybe uh, we hardly talk about uh, Industry 4.0, IoT, social media, but today this technology is very dominant and we are very much dependent on them. At, slowly. And uh, in Malaysia, in a big picture, eh, because uh, uh, for your information, cyber security Malaysia is a government company. Eh? Uh, we were established by the government to provide uh, specialized uh, technical services to the nation mm -hmm. uh, as far as cyber security is concerned. And uh, for that, uh, we have to understand the whole ecosystems. And uh, Malaysia aims to become an advanced nation driven by digital economy. That is our way forward. Eh? And, uh, but at the same time, we have to remember, as we become more advanced and technology become more high-tech, so do criminals and cyber attack. Uh, so, and in fact, criminals, they always benefit from the advancement of technology uh, to enhance their knowledge and skill. And they always come up with new tools and techniques in committing cyber attack, replacing all methods, and they are always advance. And on the other side, when uh, we look at technologies, 
Most of them, when they were first invented, they are meant to provide convenient services. The security is not in mind, is not part of the design. Yeah. So the technology that we are using today, uh, there are various variabilities, and that risks are yet to be addressed. So the function of cybersecurity is to, uh, uh, to make our cyber environment safe and secure. We don't act as obstacle or stumbling block. We want to make sure that uh, organization, the nation benefit from uh, technology. So at the end of the day, we want to uh, achieve various uh, objectives. And in reality, I share my uh, experience, in reality, no matter what we do in a cyber security, cyber attack will happen. Uh, so, and uh, we uh, try to provide as comprehensive as possible uh, cyber security solution. We try to prevent, as I mentioned, as much as possible, but cyber attack will happen. Uh, more importantly, how we respond, how we detect the intrusions, how we minimize the impact and the losses of cyber attack, and uh, uh, we try to secure all the critical services, and at the end of the day, we try to eradicate the problem, and we should continue to function to secure the interests of yeah. various stakeholders. But uh, these are the various diverse action approaches that we use in securing cyberspace. So our specialists, our experts, they have to be, uh, uh, be able to address all these diverse situations. And uh, we need talents who have diverse skill, knowledge, and experience. Yes. So that means uh, as we go more technical and more expert, they will go deeper. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but uh, uh, for, for example, my job, at strategic level, I look at things horizontal. So uh, that is why when I mean, uh, we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, every, everyone is important. So yeah. we have to put, put together all the talents and put all the various actions together based on the diverse uh, uh, skill and knowledge that our sure. experts have and how we can implement cyber security in integrated and operational. Absolutely. So the more diverse the problems, the more diverse the workforce you need to sol solve it, right? I think that's what you're trying to say. So thank you so much for sharing that, Shazli. Uh, coming back to you, Shazli, I'll come to you now. So uh, DEI and even belongingness, I must say, has never been more critical as it is today. And you sp we spoke about that already. The struggle to attract and retain driver's talent and create a succession bench to leadership is continues. So what are some challenges you're still looking at addressing and what are some possible solutions for the future workplaces? Thanks, Jasmine. I, uh, I think here at L'Oreal, we have a very unique challenge, I would say, compared to, to everybody else, uh, in which we are actually trying to, our, our diversity challenge is to try and attract more men. We are today 67% female, and our management committee is 60% female. Uh, so we have a little bit of a reverse, uh, you know, kind of engineering game. And uh, so I think, you know, before we talk about the, the solutions, it, it was very critical for us to understand what is the frame of uh, diversity, equity and inclusion that we're looking at. Because, you know, as my, my uh, friend rightly pointed out, the, the conversation has moved beyond purely gender. Uh, right, and, and how we frame, uh, uh, you know, DEI and L'Oreal is we, we base it on four key pillars. So we look at diversity, we look at age and generations, we look at disabled, you know, disability or, or less enabled, uh, and socioeconomic and uh, multi-ethnic uh, origins. Now this has to also fit into uh, you know, the, the surrounding or the environments uh, in which we work. And then you know, it has to be, uh, I would say, uh, you know, a kind of triangular uh, uh, ecosystem of the consumer, the community, and the employer, because diversity in, it, in itself is not going to, you know, it, it doesn't exist alone. Uh, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's a community of differences, uh, and having diversity without the inclusion of the diversity is also not going to benefit you, right? If you have, you know, all these, uh, um, if you have diversity from all these different areas, but they are not integrated and they are not being enabled to succeed, is also not going to benefit you in, in any particular way. So when we look at this and we say, okay, look, how are we going to tackle or you know, how are we going to increase diversity, uh, uh, not only increase, I would say, attraction, but you know, then the challenge of you know, having uh, 
uh, succession throughout is making sure that there is equity at every level of the organization and that's the most important thing and equity doesn't mean that everybody is treated the same way it is you know you have the you you give them uh, the platforms to have equal opportunity that's the more important uh, uh, dimension i would say uh, but you know when for us uh, when we when we try to look at it uh, so we, we do things like uh, solidarity sourcing we look at how are we pushing the boundaries of you know getting people with let's say uh, uh, you know different types of disabilities into the organization that requires a lot of change to your ecosystem and making sure that you can support people with these kind of backgrounds um, and you know it's it's uh, I would say not the it's it's not a straightforward topic DEI isn't but companies especially HR needs to be willing to tackle these kind of uh, conversations and put it on the table to say, okay, look, how are we going to address it? Um, and even if I go into, uh, you know, to, to address, of course, the question about uh, how we are attracting talent and making that, you know, I would say sustainable uh, throughout the, the different levels. You know, I give you a very simple example is a lot of organizations always look for best practices, but, you know, they miss the point of what is the unique challenge that your organization is going through, right? So you first need to evaluate, implement, uh, and then, um, you know, monitor the progress of it because whatever challenge that we have might, might be different from you. For example, when we were addressing, um, you know, how we are going to attract more, uh, let's say, uh, uh, male talent, and we were like, why do we have this, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of disparity, I would say. Uh, it, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to use makeup in order to, uh, to work in a, in a makeup and beauty company. Uh, you know, I definitely don't use it. My uh, country CEO doesn't, maybe skincare. Uh, but, you know, is it something that, uh, you know, men are maybe afraid of the, you know, the, the, the kind of product that they're not familiar with and they, they, they don't come to, to uh, you know, they don't want to work at L'Oreal. So we said, okay, let's, let's take a look at, uh, you know, our recruitment channels. And, uh, you know, so it's, yes, while we do get, uh, uh, you know, I would say less male applicants, but more interestingly, when it comes to things like, let's say the assessment stage, assessment center, or, you know, what we, we uh, you know, started to realize is that, uh, you know, the, the male candidates, uh, you know, I would say uh, kind of uh, being overpowered and being, uh, you know, uh, 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 or to say it in Malay, kena baham. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, we were like, okay, now this is a unique problem. How do we, how do we uh, you know, give it equal opportunity? So that's, a, you know, a message to uh, some of the young aspiring men that, uh, look, it's, that game is changing, right? Uh, as, uh, you know, Marlini said earlier that, yes, women also want to seat at the table. They are very capable. Uh, and, you know, they want to also prove that they have that worth. The same thing for everybody else, right? So if we are going to evaluate on merit, that has to apply to all the segments that we are looking at. But at the same time, when we are bringing them in, we also have to make sure that the platforms we are going to evaluate them are going to be equal. So how do we, how do we tackle that to, give, uh, you know, to, to make sure that we give equal opportunity to all? Uh, and how do we increase that attraction, I would say? So even things like male ambassadors uh, to the universities to help them educate about, look, uh, you know, what is what is it like to work in a beauty company, uh, you know, with products uh, like makeup, lipstick, etc. Again, you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to use it in order to market it or to know how it works or to understand why it's appealing to, to uh, you know, to, uh, to, to your consumers. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's an awareness, I would say, and how are you going to, to link that back to the population that you want to attract. So again, your, your challenge is unique. Understand what the challenge is and then see how you're going to tackle that, uh, you know, um, how you're going to tackle that particular challenge. Absolutely. I think diversity is a diversity problem. It's not a man-woman problem. So it can be on the, on the inverse side of it also. So very interesting. As you said, it's not about creating equal, equal workplaces. It's about equitable workplaces. So what kind of platforms can you provide to your employees to give them those opportunities that they can help bring the best selves to work, right? So that's very interesting. So thanks for sharing that. I'll come to you again, Sazli, with a question about data has become very, very important and having a data-driven approach to almost everything related to work is now a norm. So DE&I too involves a certain degree of tech and innovation. So how do you see tech enhancing DEI strategies? When we talk about cybersecurity, it's not 
merely about technical issues. Eh? People always say technology is important. Yes, it's part of the solution. But what more important is the human behind the machine. And in cybersecurity, we got various challenges. First, uh, during the hiring, we have to, write, to get the right people for the, for the job. And they are in the position and working with us with the training, experience, qualification. They are highly demanded outside. And uh, to retain them and to manage them is very challenging. And of course, we do a lot of things in order to reward them, to give recognition in order to retain. But human is always human. And they, they are, one more thing is that, uh, for example, like bonus and, uh, and uh, upgrading, uh, promotion, career progression, uh, very relative for one person to another person. And if we don't have a systematic approach uh, to address this issue, eh, uh, uh, there can be a problem. Uh, maybe I just want to share our experience last, last month, uh, we had our expert, 20 of them leaving our organization. Expert, because why? The market <laughs> outside demanded them and they pay triple, 20% higher. So no way we can uh, maintain that kind of uh, stuff. But uh, sometimes uh, job satisfaction, happiness is more than money. So there is another way how to retain them. That's why uh, we have to uh, use data. Eh? And of course, we, uh, and today data is money, actually. In business, uh, maybe we know Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. You know Mark Zuckerberg? Meta. Uh, he's the founder of Facebook. Yeah. He used to be the youngest, fastest, self-making billionaire yeah. at the age of 20 plus. What he has been doing? He's the owner of Facebook. <laughs> and then we use Facebook. And we use Facebook for free. Actually, Mark Zuckerberg used our data for money. Yes. He shared our data. And then uh, maybe from the information that we share, they know our, they can find out our interests, our need, and what kind of services. And they share all their partners. And they monetize our data. So today, data is money. And if we are... We know how to play TikTok or YouTube, we can be millionaire also. Mm. You can see sometimes, if you look at the website, eh, some said uh, the YouTuber, the TikTok influencer, they are richer than the engineers because of data. Eh? And in fact, today, if we go to the website, we are go to a certain, uh, if you want to purchase something, eh, and maybe tomorrow that product, similar product, appear because. Technology tells us what to do, they understand what we want. And this kind of technology we should be using for DE and understand IR. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, how to understand all the serious all the problem. And of course, uh, we use data analytics. Eh? Yes. Uh, we collect all the relevant data to understand the past issues, to understand what, why it happened, and maybe the trend, what are the trends of the future uh, with, uh, with regard to the uh, human needs. Uh, the, what the technology, the expertise, the qualification, and we try to provide the solution yes, before, beforehand. Yeah. And what kind of incentive or planning that we have to prepare before the problem coming? Yeah. So it's data. That's what data means, actually. It's, it's about how do you use data to make the best decisions, quicker, faster decisions, understand employees, get the best insights for your employees coming out of it. So thanks for sharing that. Yes, Arvana, please. Yeah, Yasmin, I just wanted to you know, have that extrapolation of what Sazali and Sazali said, right? I mean, I'm going to take a step back, yeah. uh, just ingraining with your question. I believe, right, strongly believe that what get analyzed, get metrics, you know, get measured, gets measured. What gets measured gets metricized. What gets metricized improves. Lovely. And that improvement drives innovation. Mm -hmm. And Sazli made that right point, right? I mean, when you're hunting for best practices, hearing from the panel, or, you know, having a coffee chat, oh, there is a best practice from L'Oreal. Let me just pick it up, right? But he said that you got to be understanding where you are, mm -hmm. right? It's not about being you know, just trying to go to the hundredth step, yeah. but you got to be knowing, are you at the first step or the tenth step? Mm -hmm. And data helps, right? So, to the point of belonging and diversity, right? Yeah. Uh, we as a company, technology company, we believe in data, but we make forward-looking decisions. Uh, but 
let's take a market perspective, right? And this data is there in Google. Uh, you can just Google and find out, right? I mean, data, proven data shows 36% of organizations, innovative organization has diverse workforce. 70% of organization which captures market share more than 10% year on year, you know, has a diverse workforce, right? And things like that, et cetera, et cetera. So we at HP, we always consciously look at the data, then we set a metric. Like I was sharing, we want to have 50% of women leadership by 2030, and that comes out of data, right? Back in our own Bole land in Malaysia, we have a factory. When I looked at the data before five years, when I came here, our diverse metrics was different. I'm just talking about gender only. Today, including factory, we are at 48 percentage, and yeah. women do amazing job online, I can tell you, right? <laughs> so just to conclude on that point, right, data is like the blood, the fluid, it is. right? And you got to have the data, and that will help you to move forward, yeah? So over to you. Can you give me some more examples from HP about how do you empower your employees, how do you make them feel more belonged, included, you know, and help them bring their best true selves to work? See, that's part of our DNA itself, the culture. You know, when this company was formed in 1939, around that Great Depression, our founder, you know, Dave and Bill, you know, Bill yes. Havlett and Dave Packett, one of the few things that they said as a culture, then back before eight years, which is true today, great visionaries, they said diversity is important. We have to ensure that every employee and every stakeholder feel being and they bring their own self to the organization, right? So that's, that's the tone from the top. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of global initiatives and local initiatives. If I can share, because you asked me, uh, we have something called Business Impact Network globally. Right, and one of the business impact network is women empowerment network. So we have a team of women who come together, they come with their own uh, objective, vision, mission, and we sponsor, be it budget, or you know, bringing the platform they want. They say that I need a powerful speaker to feel as motivated. Amazing. Then I will go to Sharina, maybe I'll go to Malini, maybe I'll come to you, or I will come to any of the women leaders. So we sponsor that. Empowerment, uh, you know, in my view, it's not something which comes from the external world. I got to believe that I am empowered. It's more of an inside out. So in our company, we make women feel that you are always empowered, step on. And one unique thing maybe which I can share is, one of our diversity, you know, the objective is enable pe people to make courageous conversation, right? So courage means empowerment, right? Yes. So I have loads to share, uh, uh, you know, happy to chat outside. Yes. And my email ID is very simple, sp at hp.com. Yeah. <laughs> but I do have a lot to share. But in HP, uh, diversity is the way of doing business. That's amazing. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, my final concluding question to all my speakers. We are talking about the future. So, uh, Shazli, I'll come to you first. Where do you see DE and I five years down the line, or any new practices that you are, you know, looking forward to coming in the future? Thanks, Asmini. I think in in five years down the line, I mean, how just how uh, DE and I has evolved from just purely gender and uh, you know, like how we talk about, you know, we have four different pillars. I expect that we will have more pillars than uh, you know what uh, what we see today. And I think, especially from a Malaysian context, is how do we broaden our horizon of uh, an understanding of what DEI is so that we can make that more inclusive. We can have a wider pool of talent that we can bring in. Uh, and how are we going to, you know? create, I would say, the, the kind of policies and opportunities in order to, uh, you know, to, to, to get that kind of diversity into to the workplace. You know, it's, it's going to be one of those things that, you know, is going to have to, to uh, you know, where us as employers and people in HR, I would say, the, the, uh, you know, the responsibility is also to continue to tackle the, the conversations that are difficult to have. You know some of the the conversations or topics that are uh, I would say uh, kind of 
taboo. People don't want to talk about. I mean, even take for example, uh, you know, mental health. Uh, before the pandemic, it, it wasn't something anybody wanted to talk about, and now it's an absolute must-have. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, bread and butter of what uh, what organisations do. Uh, and for us, uh, you know, we we uh, we looked at uh, you know some data globally and what we had out of the pandemic. Uh, and, uh, you know, there was very interestingly uh, uh, one piece of data and also a very, uh, you know, I would say a bit of a sensitive topic was the rate of things like, uh, let's say, domestic violence shot up tremendously during the pandemic. Now, and these are things that people don't talk about, but that doesn't mean it doesn't impact our employees. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have an impact on their day-to-day -day well-being. And again, you know, uh, us as employers, we play some part in helping, uh, uh, you know, employees through this uh, because at the end of the day, they are all connected to us in their ecosystem. And so, you know, we, we, this year we launched a domestic violence policy as well in terms of how are we going to support employees through this, giving them time off, uh, you know, giving them, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, support, uh, you know, remuneration where, where needed. Uh, because these are, again, topics that, you know, people would not naturally want to put on the table. So, again, you know, how do we address things that we know are there, we know it's, uh, you know, we know it exists, but, but kind of people don't want to talk about. I think that's where, you know, the, the, uh, the, the future. future of DEI then, then needs to lead to. And then, you know, as a company, your policies need to support that in order to, to create, uh, you know, an ecosystem where your employees can feel safe. And at the same time, where policies are going to, or benefits that are going to attract, uh, you know, the kind of diversity that you're looking for. And, you know, I come back to, uh, you know, my unique challenge earlier where, you know, we have, uh, we, we have a shortage of men in the beauty uh, uh, industry. And so we, were, we said, yes, we need to differentiate ourselves. I know the latest Employment Act has increased also the, the paternity leave, but, you know, we have gone one step further to... Uh, you know, to enhance our paternity leave. So we are now the highest in the country in terms of paternity. We are today at four weeks. We are moving that to six weeks as of next year. Uh, and, you know, we said, look, you know, the, 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 how do we look at diversity is that, you know, the, the traditional role of parenting has changed. It's no longer the same as what it used to be 30, 40 years ago. Now, as you know, like uh, Marlini earlier pointed out, that the, the parents take equal responsibility but you know what? Most of the policies don't support that. How are we then saying that, you know, there is going to be equality, equity among them if you are not enabling that to happen? Uh, now, it could very well be that, you know, the, the men were very happy that, oh, I had very short parental leave. I, you know, I, I, I'm going to work and, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of run away from uh, uh, all the problems and I leave it uh, at home. Uh, and uh, now, you know, they, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, they're realizing that, okay, look, yes, everybody is taking equal accountability and responsibility for everything that they do. Sure. We need to enable them to, to do that. So, yeah, that's my, uh, my, my take. Great points. I, I, that's very, very rightly said. We need to look beyond diversity, you know, the, the usual aspects of diversity that we look at. I think that's going to be a future where we look at more and more aspects of that and more pillars in the, under diversity. Sarvana, your points, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I see amber on the clock here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So my perspective is this. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So my perspective <laughs> is this. See, I said amber. I think I reminded the bellboy. Yeah. Right. So corporates of the future. You said five years, right? Corporates of the future will flourish, which has sustainability and DEI as their core priority. Yeah. Right. These two things. Look at the consumers. People buy from companies which focuses on DEI and sustainability, right? So people used to ask me before five years, SP, I don't want to buy, uh, you know, print. I, I'm from a printer company, right? So I know majority of your email will say, think twice before you print because you got to save plant, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just putting a point and a humorous note. So sustainability and DEI is what is going to make organization flourish or perish. For the society to flourish or perish, we need to have the sense of belongingness and equity. When I say society, you know, the society could be a family or relatives or a kampung or a country or world at large to have a harmony and prosperity. So coming to the title of corporate world, 
I would say that start having conversation or amplify the conversation of DEI with your influential leaders in the company because everybody has unconscious bias. Let's admit that, right? Uh, that's one. Have those conversation. Uh, you know, bring to the table what benefits, like what I shared about the 20 percent innovation. Yeah, revenue it does market. make business sense. Exactly. And the second thing, the most important thing, that's where I just grabbed the mic. There is, I'm on the red uh, zone now. Yeah. Please talk to all our women colleagues. Tell them one word. I tell this to everybody. Believe in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. can, right? Yeah. So believe in yourself because many a times they fail to become aware of their own strength. Understood. Yeah. So these are two things that I wanted to share. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Briefly, Sazali, over to you. Since we are over time, yeah. Okay. I, I am certain what to expect, what technology in the future, and what security challenges that this technology would bring. But what is certain, uh, the world is getting more connected and uh, we are connected to new devices, new partners, yes. new st stakeholders, uh, new uh, friends. And actually when uh, we increase this connectivity, we create new ecosystem, sure. digital ecosystem. We are mutually uh, affected and be impacted by one another. And with that we realize we also create new digital business supply chain. And that means uh, 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 the security of every link or point within this, this supply chain is very important. Sure. Any link broken, the whole chain broken. So this is the future and uh, that is why we call it cyber world. Yes. Because today, uh, not only we live in physical world, but we live in cyber world. But cyber world is complex. And when we talk about uh, cyber threat challenges, that is, uh, it is ambiguous. And we come up with solutions. There is no straightforward. That's sure. why in cybersecurity, we always come up with possibility and option because we cannot be stereotyped. If we stereotype and uh, typical, the criminal, they know what, how we do the job. Understood. And we have to work together. No way we can uh, work in silo because we need our partners, stakeholders because of we are living in the same business supply chain. So that is why diversity, uh, equity and inclusion is very important. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much on that. No, that was all the time we had. Thank you so much, Asli, Sarvana and Sazali. I think it is understood that DNI and i is, uh, is the way forward for businesses. It makes business sense. It is no longer just a tick in the box activity. It is something that all leaders need, and everybody from top down to bottom up, it needs to be embedded in your culture. So on that note, thank you so much for joining us.